Okay, so on this one, I am going to go over the chapter four review. I want to, for this problem, find my vertical asymptote, my horizontal asymptote, domain, range, x-intercept, y-intercept, and graph the function. To find all of these, to find my vertical asymptote, I'm going to take my denominator and set that equal to zero. So I just get x equals one. That goes as a dashed line on my graph. Then for my horizontal asymptote, I look at my coefficients of my leading terms. Because they're the same degree, it's going to be y equals 4 over 1, which is just 4, because I take the top coefficient divided by the bottom. So my horizontal asymptote is y equals 4. Then I am going to, it never says I can't, I'm going to graph this on my calculator to get, make sure I get it in the right sections. So I'm going to type this in. I have parentheses 4x four minus, four minus 5 divided by parentheses x minus 1. And then I'm going to go graph this. So this is how it curves. So I'm going to sketch that on there. So I've taken care of part D. For my domain, this is everything except for my vertical asymptote. So this is going to be negative infinity to 1, 1 to infinity. This might also be written as x can't equal 1. Same thing for my range, so I'm looking at my y values. I have negative infinity to 4, and 4 to infinity. y can't equal 4. That's another way of writing that. My x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. So on my calculator, to do this, I can go second, trace, and 0. So I want this on the left side of where it crosses the x-axis. Then I arrow over. I press enter. This gets me 1.25. And then my y-intercept is where my x value is 0. So if I go second, nope, second graph to see my table, I want to see my x value of 0, which gives me my y-intercept at 5. So to find this one, you go second table, look at x equals 0. To get the y-intercept, you want to go second trace, and then choice 2 is 0. So. Same thing for number two. This one is in standard form, so I want to, to find my vertical asymptote. I again take this and set it equal to zero for my denominator. So x equals one, x equals one. And then this plus five means that it's shifting the graph of five. So my horizontal asymptote is gonna be at, at nope, y equals five. Then again, I want to go and graph this on my calculator, so I make sure I get in the white right spots. So I have negative 2 divided by x minus 1, and then plus 5. So this one looks like that. My domain is going to be negative infinity to 1, and 1 to infinity, or it can also be x doesn't equal 1. My range is negative infinity to 5, 5 to infinity, or y doesn't equal 5. My x-intercepts, again, I'm going to go second, trace, I'm going to choose 0. I want to arrow my black cursor over until it's on the left side of where it's crossing the x-axis, press enter, arrow over, cross it, and press. So this gives me 1.40. To find my y-intercept, I go to my table, and I want to look for my y-value of 0, which is 7. Okay, number 3 wants me to do long division to put this in the form, and then graph it. So, I am going to have x plus 1, and it's going into 2x plus 3. I don't know why I wrote that bar so big. 
So I'm looking for what I need to multiply x by to turn it into 2. That is going to be 2. So I am doing 2 times x plus 1, which gives me 2x plus 2, because I need to remember to distribute. I want to change my sign so I can subtract it out. The two x's cancel out. 3 minus 2 is 1. So the way I write this is I have 1 over x plus 1, because that's my remainder. And then I have plus 2, because that's what I got when I divided. So my vertical asymptote is I take my denominator, and I set that equal to 0. So x equals negative 1. My horizontal asymptote is just that number off to the side, so y equals 2. My domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to positive infinity, or, oops, x can't equal negative 1. My range is going to be negative infinity to 2, 2 to infinity, y can't equal 2. So I want to go ahead and graph this. Right, x equals negative 1, y equals 2, and then I'm just going to graph this to double check. So I have 2x plus 3 divided by x plus 1. Okay, so this looks like Number four wants me to complete the following, so I need to say what my vertical asymptote is, my horizontal asymptote, my domain and my range. So I am going to start off with my vertical asymptote. I'm going to take my denominator and set that equal to zero. Um, everything is even, so I'm going to divide everything by two just to make everything smaller numbers for myself. So I get 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 equals zero. I'm going to use my AC method, so my A is 3, my C is negative 8, A times C is 3 times negative 8, which is negative 24, so I'm looking for what multiplies to negative 24 and adds to 10, that is going to be um, negative 2 and positive 12, so I'm going to split that up, I get 3x squared minus 2x plus 12x minus 8. Oops, minus 8 I wanted in blue. Then I want to split this up into two groups. So in my first group I can take out an x. And I'm left with 3x minus 2. On my second group I can take out a 4. So I'm left with 3x minus 2. Then I take my outside pieces and put them together. So I have x plus 4 times 3x minus 2 equals 0. I take my factors and set those equal to 0. On the first one, I get x equals negative 4. On the second one, I have 3x equals 2 divided by 3. x equals 2 thirds. So this one I have two values. I have x equals negative 4 and 2 thirds. So to find my horizontal asymptote, because my degree on the denominator is larger, that means my horizontal asymptote is just y equals 0. Um, then I need to find my domain. So this is negative infinity to negative 4, negative 4 to 2 thirds, 2 thirds, to infinity, or another way it could be written is x can't equal negative 4, x can't equal 2 thirds. My range is going to be negative infinity to 0, 0 to infinity, or another way this can be written is y can't equal 0. These want me to solve for x and eliminate any extraneous solutions. So on this one, I can multiply by my LCD, which is x plus 2. So that's going to give me x squared times x plus 2 over x plus 2 equals 4 times x plus 2 
over x plus 2. My x plus 2s cancel out of both fractions, so I'm left with x squared equals 4. Then I can take the square root of both sides. Because I took the square root, I get plus or minus 2. But I need to go back and look at my denominator in my original equation. x can't equal negative 2. So my only answer here is x equals 2. Same idea on number 6, except I'm going to factor this one. Um, x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2, x minus 2. So my LCD here is x plus 2, x minus 2. So this whole thing I want to multiply that by. x plus 2 times x minus 2. I'm going to rewrite that out. So I have 7 times x plus 2 x minus 2 over x plus 2, plus 5 times x plus 2, x minus 2 over x minus 2, and then equals 10x minus 2 times x plus 2, x minus 2 over x plus 2, x minus 2. I just rewrote the denominator as the factor part. So over here I can cancel out the x plus 2, x minus 2, and then the x plus 2, x minus 2 on the end. So I'm just going to rewrite. I have 7 times x minus 2 plus 5 times x plus 2 equals 10x minus 2. So I want to go ahead and distribute. So I have 7x minus 14 plus 5x plus 10 equals 10x minus 2. I'm going to combine like terms on my left side. So I have 12x minus 4 equals 10x minus 2. I'm going to subtract 10x on both sides. So I get 2x minus 4 equals negative 2. Add 4 to both sides. I get 2x equals 2. And I want to divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 1. I need to check what my denominators couldn't equal before. I couldn't equal 2 or negative 2, so I'm good. My answer here is x equals 1. Okay. Uh, same idea on number 7. I want to factor this first denominator. That's going to be x minus 3, x plus 4. So again, I can multiply by my LCD here which is going to be x minus 3, x plus 4. So that's going to give me 2 times x minus 3, x plus 4, over x minus 3, plus x times x minus 3, x plus 4, over x plus 4. And then my last fraction is going to be 2 times x minus 3, x plus 4, over x minus 3, x plus 4. I'm going to cancel out what I have. So my first fraction, I have 2 times x plus 4, plus x times x minus 3, equals 2. And then I distribute, so I get 2x plus 8 plus x squared minus 3x equals 2. Combine like terms, so I have x squared minus x plus 8 equals 2. Subtract 2 on both sides, I get x squared minus x plus 6 equals 0. It's going to factor to x Actually, since my 6 is positive, I can't just factor it like I normally would. I am going to use the quadratic formula here, which, remember, is x equals negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. So my a is 1, my b is negative 1, and my c is 6. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. I have x equals negative negative 1 plus and minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6 
over 2 times a, which is 1. So then I want to simplify. I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 24 over 2, which is 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 23 over 2, which will simplify to 1 plus or minus i square root of 23 over 2. Same idea on number 8. I want to factor that denominator. So that's going to give me x minus 5, x minus 4, which is my LCD. So I'm going to multiply everything by the x minus 5, x minus 4. So I am going to write that out. So I have 4 times x minus 5, x minus 4 over x minus 5 plus x times x minus 5, x minus 4 over x minus 4 equals negative 10 times x minus 5, x minus 4 over x minus 5, x minus 4. And then I want to cancel out what I have in common. So it leaves me with 4 times x minus 4 plus x times x minus 5 equals negative 10. Distributing, I get 4x minus 16 plus x squared minus 5x equals negative 10. Combining like terms, I get x squared minus x minus 16 equals negative 10. I'm going to go ahead and add 10 to both sides. I get x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. This one does factor. It's going to be oops, x minus 3, x plus 2. So if I set those equal to 0, I get x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. If I look back at my original equation, x can't equal 5, x can't equal 4, so I'm good. My answer here is x equals negative 2 and positive 3. Number 9, I'm going to factor again, so that gives me x times x minus 2, which is my LCD. So I'm just going to go ahead and factor, multiply by the LCD, which is x times x minus 2. That gets me 10x times x minus 2 over x times x minus 2 plus 4x times x minus 2 over x equals 5 x times x minus 2 over x minus 2. I'm going to cancel out what I have in common. So first fraction, everything cancels out. Second fraction, x cancels out. Last fraction, x minus 2 cancels out. I'm going to rewrite it. I have 10 plus 4 times x minus 2 equals 5x. Then I just want to come or distribute. So I have 4x minus 8 equals 5x. Combine like terms, so I have 4x plus 2 equals 5x. Subtract 4x on both sides. I get 2 equals x. Originally, x can't equal 0 and x can't equal 2. Because I got a number I can't equal, I just write no solution. Same thing on 10. My LCD here is 2x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2x. I get 2x plus 2x times x minus 5 over x equals 2x times x plus 11 over 2. This fraction of the x's cancel out. This one, the 2's cancel out. So then I have 2x plus 2 times x minus 5 equals x times x plus 11. So I have 2x. Then I want to distribute, which gives me 2x minus 10 equals x squared plus 11x. Combining like terms, I get 4x minus 10 equals x squared minus, nope, plus 11x. I want to move everything over, so I'm going to subtract the 4x and add the 10. So I get 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 10. This factors to x plus 5 
times x plus 2, which means I get x equals negative 5, x equals negative 2. And on my original equation, x can't equal 0. So I'm good. Both of these are my answer here. Okay, so this question wants me to use the graph to determine 7 equaling this equation. So what I want to do, this is in place of my y. So I want to look for my y equaling 7. So let me grab a little bit of trick. So my y equals 7 right here. My x value there is 5. So my answer is just x equals 5. My domain is all real numbers. So x is my domain. I want to see where my vertical asymptote is. That is, if I draw it on this paper, in between those two, it is going to be at, where did I draw that at? 2. And then my range is where they are avoiding, which is this line right here. Y can't equal this one wants me to simplify the fractions so I want to factor each of these on my numerator I can pull out a 2 that gives me x minus 3 on my denominator this is following a special pattern the difference of cubes oops that should be a b That's for if it's a minus, if it's a plus, it's a cubed plus b cubed equals a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. I'll also have these up on the whiteboard when you take the test. Um, so anyways, I want to follow factor using this pattern. It has a minus sign, so I'm going to use the top one I wrote. That's going to be x minus 3, x squared plus 3x plus 9. So on this one, my x minus 3s cancel out. So I have 2 on top, x squared plus 3x plus 9, and then I have to say what I canceled out, x can't equal 3. Same idea on number 13, I want to factor my numerator. This is going to be 3 times x plus 4. And then on the bottom, it's a different, or it's a sum of cubes, so I'm going to use the bottom. The cube root of 64 is 4, so I have x plus 4 times x squared minus 4x plus 16, because that's 4 squared. I can cancel out my x plus 4s, so I have 3 over x squared minus 4x plus 16. x can't equal negative 4, so that's what I canceled out. These ones want me to perform the indicated operation. Um, with multiplication and division, I want to factor and then cancel things out. So on my first numerator, I can pull out an x. That gives me x times x minus 3 over x minus 2. And then on the second numerator, I can factor that to x minus 2, x plus 3 over x. Anything that's on the top and bottom with multiplication, I can cancel out. So I can cancel out the x minus 2s and the x's. That just leaves me with x minus 3 times x plus 3. For multiplication, I typically leave it in its factor form. So I just need to say what x can't equal. I cancel out a regular x, so it can't equal 0. And then I canceled out x minus 2, so I changed the sign to turn that into a 2. Number 15 is division, so I first want to flip it and turn it into multiplication. <coughs> so then I just want to factor these. My first numerator is going to factor to minus 2 plus 3 because the x is positive in the middle. My bottom is going to factor to x plus 3, x plus 4. My second numerator is going to factor to x minus 3, x plus 4. And my second denominator factors to x minus 3, x minus 2. So I want to look for what I can cancel out. I have an x minus 2 on the top and bottom. I have an x plus 3 on the top and bottom. I have an x plus 4 on the top and bottom. And I have an x minus 3 divided by an x minus 3. So this gives me 1 because everything's simplified. And I have to have something. And then x can't equal 
negative 3, negative 4, 3, and 2. Everything I've crossed out from my denominator, it can't equal for my x value. Number 16, this is addition, so I need to have the same denominator. So I first want to factor. That is going to be x minus 8, x plus 3. So I need to look at what my second fraction is missing. I have the x minus 3, so I need to multiply my top and bottom by the x plus 3. So my first fraction is going to stay the same. I always leave my denominators factored, but my numerators when I'm adding, I want to distribute. So that's going to give me 3x plus 9 over x plus 3. So, oops, oops x minus 8. So then I want to combine my numerator. That is going to give me 3x plus 16 over x minus 8, x plus 3. I can rearrange the or of my denominator, so that's fine. I can't factor anything out of 3 and 16, so this is my final answer. And I didn't cross anything out of my denominator, so there's nothing that it can't equal. Same thing on 17, I want to factor my bottom. That's going to be x minus 8 times x plus 2. Oops, I meant to rewrite this whole fraction, not just the bottom. So I, I can leave my numerator alone, so I'm going to leave it as x squared minus 3. And then my bottom turns into x minus 8, x plus 2. So for my second fraction, I already have the x plus 2. I just need to multiply by oops, x minus 8 over x minus 8. So then my first fraction stays the same. And then my second fraction, I want to go ahead and FOIL on my numerator. So I have x times x, which is x squared. x times negative 8 is negative 8x. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. I'm going to leave my bottom factor. Then I want to go ahead and distribute this negative. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of those signs after it. I have x squared minus 3 on my first fraction over x minus 8 x plus 2 plus negative x squared. And I want to combine those two x terms. So I have a positive 8x and a negative 5x. So that's going to give me positive 3x plus 40 over x minus 8, x plus 2. Then I want to go ahead and combine like terms. I have x squared minus x squared. Those cancel out. So then I have 3x. 40 minus 3 is 37 over x minus 8, x plus 2. 3 and 37 cannot be simplified, so this is my final answer here. This one, I have a fraction on a fraction. I can multiply by my LCD or I can make one giant fraction on my top and then um, use division. I'm going to do that method and then on number 19 I'll use my LCD. So this first one, I need my two fractions to have the same denominator. So this one's going to get multiplied by x over x and the second one's going to get multiplied by x over 1. I mean x plus 1. So that's going to give me 4x over x times x plus 1. And then I have plus 2x don't forget to distribute that second, that 2 to the second number, so 2, over x times x plus 1, still over 2, x plus 1. I want to combine to make one fraction, so I'm going to have 6x plus 2 over x times x plus 1. And then instead of having this divided there, I'm just going to write it off to the side. So divided by 2 over x plus 1. I can rewrite this. My first fraction stays the same. And my second one, I turn it into multiplication and it flips. So I have x plus 1 over 2. I can factor out the x plus 1s. I can also factor my numerator a little bit more. I can have 2 times 3x plus 1 over x. And I'm going to use 1 as a placeholder for my second fraction. So 1 half. The 2s cancel out. I'm left with 3x plus 1 over x. 
I can't have x equaling negative 1. I also want to look at my original equations. So negative 1 is right there. I also can't have it equaling 0. On number 19, my LCD here is 5x. So I want to multiply my top and bottom fractions by 5x. So on my top, that's going to give me 5x cubed. On the bottom, I'm going to have 20x over 5 minus 20x over x. So I want to simplify these two fractions. 20 divided by 5 is going to give me 4. 20x over x cancels out those x's. So I still have 5x cubed on top. Now I have 4x minus 20. So I have 5x cubed. I'm going to factor that denominator, so I'm going to pull out a 4. x minus 5. Nothing I can simplify from here. I did cancel out an x from my denominator, so x can't equal 0. Number 20, I'm going to use my LCD here as well. This is going to be 5x. So my top and bottoms both get multiplied by 5x. That's going to give me 25x over x minus 5x squared over 5. Bottom part of my fraction is going to have 5x over 5 minus 5x over x. So simplifying this, this one my x's cancel out, this one my 5's cancel out. 5's x's. So on my top I have 25 minus x squared over x minus 5. I want to make my leading coefficient positive, so I'm going to pull out a negative. That's going to give me negative, and then in parentheses, x squared minus 25 over x minus 5. I want to go ahead and factor that. So then that's going to give me x minus 5, x plus 5 over x minus 5. Then I can cancel out the x minus 5s. So I have negative parentheses x plus 5. Um, this question, I think it might have you distribute, so it's, it's pretty easy. It's going to be negative x minus 5. x can't equal 5 because of what I crossed out here. And then because I had an x on my denominator earlier, x can't equal 0. Okay. Um, So here I want to use my table to write an equation that re represents a relationship between x and y. So this is what we did back at the beginning of the chapter where I need to decide if it's direct or inverse. So um, if k equals y divided by x, this is going to be direct. So if I get the same number dividing my y value by my x value, it'll be direct. And if k equals x times y, it's going to be an inverse relationship. So I'm going to first take these and check. So on 21, I want to do 30 divided by 25. I mean 2.5. That gets me 12. 48 divided by 4 is 12. 90 divided by 7.5 gives me 12. And then double checking, 108 divided by 9 gives me 12. So this one worked for dividing is direct. And then I need to write my equation. My k is 12. I got that. So remember my direct equation is y equals kx. And my inverse equation is y equals k divided by x. So I just plug it back in. I have y equals 12x. On number 21, I'm going to divide. 81 divided by 1 is 81. 27 divided by 3 is 9. That is not direct. Then I'm going to multiply. So 8 times 81 times 1 is 81. 27 times 3 is 81. 9 times 9 is 81. 81. So my k here is 81. And this one is, I forgot to say, inverse. So I'm going to have y equals 81 over x for my equation. Number 23 says the time it takes for a leaky barrel to empty varies inversely with the, with the rate. So it tells me inverse. Uh, 
that the liquid is leaking in gallons per minute. The leaking rate of a certain liquid is three gallons per minute. And it takes a, ba a barrel, a full barrel of liquid, 30 minutes to empty. So time is going to be my x, and the rate it's leaking is going to be my y. So gallons per minute, this is my y, and x is my 30. So I'm going to have 3 equals k divided by 30. So to solve for k, I multiply both sides by 30. k equals 90. So then I know my rate is going to be 18. So that's plugging in for y equals 90 over x. I want to cross multiply to get my x out of the fraction. So then I have 18x equals 90. And I want to go ahead and divide both sides by 18. x equals 5.